So I good remember. morning, everybody, and welcome. Gloria and I are just chit-chatting as we always do. I'm going to turn it over to Gloria. Hi, everyone. How are you? Can you believe it's almost June? It's hard <laughs> to believe. It seemed like at the beginning uh, a long time. We thought it was going to be two weeks. Remember, we thought two weeks and then <laughs> we're back in the classroom and then it trickled into a little longer and a little longer and then all of a sudden it was April and May and soon it's June and um, it's been quite a quite a journey for many of us a lot of emotional a lot of fear a lot of change of understanding but we survived it ladies and gentlemen I don't know if there's any gentlemen here but uh, there are male teachers so in, you know we have survived uh, getting the remote learning out amongst our classes and I think we've learned a lot from it too. I think we've benefited and learned a lot and made mistakes and give ourselves a lot of uh, kudos, especially over the technology part of it that we've mastered, able to work the computer and still hold a puppet in one hand. Mm -hmm. That would be like juggling fl flamethrowers, you know? That was the hardest part. Um, and, it, and then also you never knew if the, if the powers that be with the internet was going to go in or out or there was an overload or whatever it would be or if you had a ipad instead of a computer or some different kind of device so that's been a challenge as well um, for all of us but so good to see everyone and at the end of may now let's close it with thanking our blessed mother we can say our, our hail mary together and thank mary for the gift of being with us. Mary has been with us all through this. You know, Don't you feel that, that the Blessed Mother has been supporting us and moving us forward in this? I certainly do. So together, let's say the Hail Mary again, begin in the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, Son and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Amen. And blessed is the fruit of the fever of Jesus. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, the first now and the Lord of power. Amen. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It has been an interesting, rewarding journey. Um, there are things. And we're getting ready for the end of the year. I don't know um, exactly what you've planned. I know in my school, um, we're all doing what the principal is asking for. So we're doing it as a school, which is good. We have our own schedule. Our, we call it moving up or graduation or love you, goodbye, whatever it might be. You know, it could have a different connotation. Some schools don't like the term graduation because it sort of makes it seem like they are now free to go on to another school. We think that if we keep it moving up, they sort of might stay into the kindergarten and our threes go on to our fours. It's just a, a, a reference or you know, preference, a preference. But um, we're having several events. We each have our day, each of the different grades, like the three-year-olds have their day, for celebration, the fours, kindergarten, and some of the other grades. And the reason that our principal split it up like that is siblings, brothers and sisters who may want to come to somebody's event or day of uh, celebration. So we're putting out invites for Zooming to anyone in the school. We're also, and this is a thought, you have plenty of time as you plan it, we're letting the teacher of the next grade, like if you're four-year-olds, the teacher of the kindergarten might come into your last day Zoom and read a story and introduce herself and talk a little bit about her curriculum. Not a bad marketing. We're still always looking for enrollment and marketing uh, strategies. If you're the teacher of the four-year-old, you might want to go on to the threes and introduce yourself again. I'm sure they know you. Maybe parents can come and say hello. You want to make your last your your last closure sort of collaborative, where parents are encouraged to wave and look at one another. Because many of these young parents, as we have had them 
throughout the school year have made friends with one another. If you remember your own journey as a young mother, if, if that's your particular experience, you made friends with the parents of your child's classmates. And that's sort of, sometimes it lasts all the way through graduation of grammar school, high school, college, you never know. So perhaps the parents would enjoy an opportunity to uh, see one another, et cetera. So I'm curious, and I'm gonna open it up in a minute. I wanna know what have you finalized for the end of the year? Are you singing as a group? Because that's very hard. We were struggling with that a little bit. You notice when we said the Hail Mary, we're all on different, we're a little, 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 little. I, it's not just the cue of one, two, three, go. It has to do with our microphones, uh, our individual devices are not whatever. So I suggested to my teachers, if they want the children to sing, play the song in the background. The person who is hosting, who is in charge of the controls, put the song on, whether it's a grand old flag or whatever it might be, and then there'll be one, um, one uh, voice or one, one instrument leading the group, and then the others can join in to the best of their ability. But having said that now, because I can't run the whole thing, I gotta pick your brains. What ideas or what have you put together um, so far for your end of the year? I did a party, are you delivering cookies to their doorsteps again? Getting an airplane to fly over, what are you doing? Somebody scratching their nose or what? Well, are you doing anything at all? Do you have any? We are in Ramsey. What we're doing, what I'm doing for kindergarten is I'm collecting pictures that the parents have taken of the kids during this coronavirus, plus all the pictures I have through the year, and I'm making a video. That's going to be our end of the year party for them to watch the video so they can see each other. And we're going to, I'm going to use the songs that we would have used at our end of the year celebration that the music teacher has recorded for us to put on that video. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds, that sounds uh, like a really good plan. Um, are you good at putting the video together? Are you comfortable with that? I'm getting that, there. <laughs> that intimidates me a little bit. That, uh, that I'm going, ooh, that kind of scares me a little bit. Um, but do many of you know how to do that and are comfortable putting together a video? Anne, can you offer any advice for anybody that is thinking of that? Is there a, a, a way in which to make it? You know, really, I think the best answer would be to talk to the tech integration specialist at the school and the principal because every school has different devices and different tools. And even at home, you may have very different equipment. So, you know, definitely speak with your tech integration specialist on that one. And there's, there's free items that are available online to do it. So if you're struggling and your tech integration specialist is as well, get them in touch with me and we'll, we'll work together. Um, is anybody else doing a video or yes um if you're doing a slideshow i suggest you blow up the pictures and look at them very very carefully um there's sometimes things going on in the background that you don't really anticipate i've been doing videos for 15 20 years so. right do parents have any way of um getting a copy of it or is that really difficult now to even provide that no, no, they'll get, they'll get a copy of it. They yeah. will get a copy? Absolutely. That's a lot of hard work, but that makes it really relevant. And I mean, I can see these videos being shown uh, at their wedding, you know, when they're getting a college graduation or bridal showers or bachelor parties in, in 30 years or 20 years. These are extreme, and, those, and especially grandma and grandpa who may not be able to be there um, for that uh, event. Um, what about your aides, your classroom aides? Are they going to be invited or allowed to participate or witness any of this? Have you thought about that? All of ours are on here right now. And oh. Sonia, Sonia is my left hand and she's the one that's been doing our video for I think 19 out of 20 years we've had it. Anyone else thinking of a... Hi, I'm from the same school as Kathy is. I'm the pre-K yes. teacher. Um, and I'm doing a video as well, but our kids are dropping stuff off on Monday to us, the 8th. 
So I'm sending home um, a flavor ice ice pop so we can have an ice cream party together when they watch their videos oh, that way. That's very, that's good. They can take it and freeze it, you know, and put, and they can have it together. I like that idea. I think we might think about that even with our own children. We are um, having a last day after school is closed. Our principal invited us to go in and pack up any of their extra set of clothing, uh, art projects that they didn't take with them, water bottles, um, whatever things they may have left, backpacks, sweaters, thing, you know, the regular stuff to put it in a plastic bag. And then we are going to have a drop drive through on a particular day. Parents will be told what time they can come by. They can't get out of the car, but we're just going to drop a bag in the trunk. So that's yeah, the way that's what we're doing. So that's when um, they're getting their flavor ice and I made t-shirts on my Cricut that say um, Academy of St. Paul Pre-K-4 with a Mickey head because my classroom theme is Mickey Mouse. Um, and then they have a memory book that one of my aides is working on with them. And um, I'm trying to think what else we're doing. And we have sand pails that we're delivering to them. And there's video, their movie that I'm making. Um, I have a flash drive for each of them. So that way we're delivering it to their house. On the how last many day children school. do you have in your, that? How many children do you have in your class? I originally had 17 and then three withdrew during the, the remote learning. So I have 14. Anything else from anybody back the end of the year? Report cards? Yes, hand up. Monica? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hi, uh, Monica. We have, yes, we have a, on the Zoom, we're going to have a Zoom, actually the whole school, I think, uh, the early childhood, wildlife, wildlife Rizzo. Rizzo's was like, they're going to bring live animals and then the children are going to see them. It's like, instead of going to a class trip, they will enjoy that. That's How did you arrange that? Uh, it's going to be divided like pre-K three, pre-K four, and then kindergarten. And then depends on the size of the class. I think you can have up to 30 students per session. And then um, we're going to pay for, for it instead of a class trip. Was this something that you would have done as a, uh, uh, as a field day or as an uh, assembly, um, having this group come to the school? Was that something that you normally do? Um, Pre, pre, pre three, pre four, they don't do much, but we were thinking about bringing like uh, animals, petting zoo, something like that, but we never did it. So now that we had the opportunity to do it through a Zoom, that's what we decided to, um, to do for the farm. I would love to know the details of the company, the cost, um, where it's going to, is it, it, it just, uh, that's very, very intriguing. That would be a really wonderful event. So maybe the next time we meet, if you can find out a little bit about the company that does that. When I was a teacher, it, you did a lot of this yourself. The, the laws were different. You could, I had the Turtleback Zoo. I was a kindergarten teacher in a Catholic school in East Orange. And every year, the Turtleback Zoo would come to my school free of charge. I guess it was a marketing strategy for them. It was just getting started talking about the 80s, the late 70s, we're going back a long time. And they would deliver, transport, and have that assembly in the cap, in the, uh, uh, one of the, in the auditorium. Now, you're not getting that anymore. Legal issues would prevent, you know, who could go near them, the animal, do they bite, who's gonna transport them, whatever. But there were a lot of opportunities in my day to bring outside organizations in with no cost. Somebody have their hand up? We just did a, um, a virtual tour from Turtleback Zoo for pre k oh, virtual? And it How was really work? good. The guy, you know. Do it. How do you do it? Explained, um, they it talked about the animals. It was good. What does it cost? I always worry about the money. The Southern teacher um, organized it. I, I don't think it cost anything, but I'm not sure. Angela, what, Angela it was free. Yeah, it was, yeah. Free. free? Free. It was for like 30 kids. I think we did kindergarten, how, I don't know, Robin, how far did we go, first grade or second grade? Uh, up to second grade. Yeah, but it was really good. The guy was good. You learned about different animals. 
So um, you, it's like a virtual tour. We yeah. did a virtual tour at Aquinas. I don't know if we did San Diego Zoo or something. Um, but God, I just loved in the day when they would bring items to the building. Um, the Newark Museum used to pack up and deliver artifacts. And, and when I was a kid, a grade teacher, and I, we were studying Native American Indians or whatever, they would bring items that that were indicative of that culture yeah. of the time. And we would have them in our classroom for a month. We could keep them and then they would pick them up. It was incredible. Again, fun. And it sounds, so like this that. Was a, it sounds like this was a virtual tour plus because it, it sounds like your kids could have asked questions about the animals and yeah. really interactive, right? Yes. Nice. So it's more oh. than just a, a visually it was an interactive. That's great. These are wonderful. The wonderful Swiss Farms. I'm sorry, going back to before, Swiss Farms brings animals to your school. S W I F T. We did a live nativity at our school this year. Oh, wow. I'm and every year we have Turtleback Zoo come also. They come and do a little presentation with different types of animals. All right, we should be looking more into those kinds of, uh, you know, I remember going to the pumpkin farm and picking apples or whatever. The, the big problems are transportation, going to a site, getting a bus, the cost of whatever, you know, even going to the paper mill playhouse used to be something that they had shows for kids sometimes. But the transportation is the problem because do we use cars? Do they need car seats? Uh, what are the insurance liabilities? It, it becomes a little bit more complicated than it was. That's why the virtual uh, visits are, are nice. They're not as good as being there smelling the animals. It's nice to walk through the menagerie and smell those animals and know you really are in a zoo. There's a, something about that sensory. Mm. Mm. Uh, but it sounds like you have ideas and plans. Uh, what I really think we should think about right now, and this is something we should always do at the end of any school year. We need to self-reflect, and this has been an incredibly unusual year. But at the end of your year, each year, you should start to think about what worked, what didn't work, and why. Was it something I might have done differently, something um, that I tried and stumbled into, but will it work again next year? To me, that's really the sign of a really good teacher. And the gift of teaching is, it's Groundhog Day for us. Every September, the year starts again. Any mistakes you've made, any bumps in the road, they're behind us. We start again. We are very fortunate in that manner that we get to recreate our, our world around the experience we have. Now, if you are the kind of teacher that always comes in from the left and goes out through the right, and that's the way you've done it. Well, you're not really up with the times, you're not meeting the needs of the children, and you're stagnant. You have to, you know, and I know you're not. I know you're not those kind of people because you wouldn't be here today. You're not getting paid to come and do these things. You're people that want to grow and develop and add new ideas to your repertoire of teaching. But it's important to self-reflect. Things that you did, this year that worked and maybe something you would change now we have the power we have the we don't have a lot of power over how they grow but we have the power over the environment we have the power of how we establish the classroom balance now i want you to think i wonder if you can um, share any ideas that you might have established this year or what is your routine in the morning? Do you come in prepared? Is there stuff ready for them? And have you always been that way? Or did you start to change and develop? Bobby, yeah. what do you want to share? But how, how would you evaluate some of the things that you've done this year, especially with the hurdle of moving out in, um, in March, you know? Giving you a minute to think, and then I'll tell you my stories. But I like to hear your stories too, because if I don't hear your stories, I can't steal them. 
and I steal all the time. That's my gift. I take all your stories and I share them all over, you know? I'm like a bee pollinating all over the, the place. But um, yes, Monica. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, asking parents for some feedback over how I can, you know, I could have made a better improve it. And I think that's important. Like, uh, I was thinking myself, maybe I should have done more Zoom meetings. And, um, and you know, I've been doing a lot of videos a um, couple of times a week at Zoom. But they also, we have a gym teacher doing Zoom. And, um, you know, I want to ask them some question. Maybe they want specials to do their own Zoom because the specials have been doing videos. So, you know, I want to ask feedback from the parents. Very That's brave. Very so brave awesome. and very smart because honest criticism gives you an opportunity to grow. We don't expect to always hear, you're wonderful, you're wonderful, you're wonderful. You are wonderful. But maybe they would say, uh, you need to make sure that the sun is not coming from behind your head. As something as simple as that. Or uh, my child doesn't, can we change the time or whatever we might, what, any feedback is a way in which to grow. Yeah, Donna? Uh, and sometimes that. I was thinking, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, Monica, I finished. Sorry, what was, I just want to finish, I'm sorry. Um, I was thinking that sometimes I decide what I'm teaching them, but I think the parents should help out too. Maybe they, they should have an input of what they would like their children to learn. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's certain topics or ideas that they have that, you know, it's important to listen to the parents. That's what I think now. That, yeah. uh, it's not only me, but the parents with me. Together we can figure out a nice program for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it, sorry. Excellent, excellent. Because they, who knows their child better than they do? I mean, you know them pretty well, but they may know things about their child or their home or their personal life that may be important to you to know as you design and plan your activities. Donna, did you have a thought? I was going to say I did that about a month ago. I sent an email to all my parents asking them how the distance learning was going so far and if they had any suggestions for me that would make it easier for them. And I think I heard from one. So then I posted it on Dojo and then I had to send the email home at least three times. Um, and the times, and that's exactly, very few things were the same of their needs or what they thought. They were kind of all over. Someone thought we should have more Zooms. Someone else said that they never tuned into Zooms. Someone said they liked the videos. Someone said that they didn't usually watch the videos, but did Zoom. So it was hard. But my point is what I would really like to figure out is a way to get parents to respond. They, they really don't. My thing for the past two weeks is now that we've finished you know, the alphabet and we're approaching the end of the year, if there's any special stories any of the children really enjoyed, I would go back up to school and get them and read them again. So I chose one um, caps for sale the other day because when we did that, we all wore caps and one of our little guys pretended he was the peddler. So I read that story and I posted the pictures and before I read it, I asked them to close their eyes and to imagine Leo sitting there with all the caps on his head. Two children requested books yeah. and I went up and got them. And I said, you know, a special request, this is for so-and-so. And then on Zoom the other day, um, Sonia pulled up the space um, rocket. We watched the two astronauts get to uh, whatever it was called. I know they're in the dragon, but whatever the, the big thing was called, we watched them get into the elevator and then get out. So that was very cool to be able to do that. So yesterday I read a rocket ship book. So perfect. Perfect. You're staying very current, you know? Okay. I want to talk a little bit about, I'm happy we're getting ready for the end of the year that we're reflecting, but I've been doing a lot of thinking about um, how I want to bring things in next year, what kinds of concepts I want to bring to the school. Hopefully we will be there in hopefully the same format, but in whatever the format is, we're coming back. We're now you're not killing us. We're the first responders. We're going in. We're going in for those kids. Um, and I remembered being a young teacher, a very young teacher. The first time I started to teach, I know I've told you that I didn't finish college and it took me 17 years to finish college. I know I've told you that story before. So I didn't have the traditional training and preparation than one might have had. 
So when I read a story to my second grade class, my very first year, I would take the book, read the book, turn the pages back and forth, read the book, put it down and say, okay, now go get your coats and pack your books up and let's go. So I never really understood that a book is not just for entertainment. A book is a tool. It's a means in which you can communicate concepts, not just stories, but tons of stuff come from the use of a book. I've learned that over the years by making a lot of mistakes and by watching you ladies and others teach and seeing the strategies that you've displayed that you may not even realize how good you are at what you do. But now, if I'm gonna read a book, I'm gonna make sure that I spend a lot of time, a lot of time exploring what the book is all about. Looking at the cover, maybe even the colors. I might, I might and using my finger as I'm pointing across, et cetera talking about what's on the table, predicting what's going to be the story, uh, using a lot of terminology that doesn't necessarily fit just in reading a book, scientific, data, uh, all of this stimulation, imagination, predicting, uh, verbalizing what I think, listening to others' thoughts, all of that comes from sitting and reading a book. And you know, you can read a book 10 times, and every time you read it, you get something different out of it. We say, oh, I read that already. I don't want to read it again. Children, I loved reading the same books over and over. My favorite book, I was telling Anne, I, have, I had a couple of favorite books. I loved this book, The Five Chinese Brothers. If anybody has heard of that book, would you wiggle your hand or something? You did, okay, somebody's heard of it, A couple of people. I don't know if I can read it anymore. Now I'm wondering if it is politically correct or insulting. What do you think, I think it might be? I don't know, you know, I don't know. I adored this book and I don't know why, but I could read it over and over. It was about five brothers, they all looked alike. They happen to be Chinese. I just read this now in the forward here that it was written in 1938 before I was born, thank God. And the, uh, the dedication, let me see where I just saw that. I saw it. She wrote, to my father who made me love China and to my mother, a born storyteller. So the person who wrote the book never meant it to be insulting or critical. She had a love of China. Anyway, each of these brothers had a, had a magic skill. One could swallow the ocean. One had a neck of iron. One could never be burned. One could stretch himself. And it goes on to tell a story. One of them does something inappropriate. The king says, well, you did that. I'm going to have to put you to death. And he says, can I go home and see my mother? So when he goes home, they all looked alike. They were exactly the same. He, he was going to drown him. He sends back the brother that can't drown. So he sends the brother back. Then he's going to burn him, sends back the brother. Whatever it is, it's a, it's a contingent story. It's like a superhero story. No cape stuff and nobody's flying. But I just love this book. And there were other books that I loved. I loved Bartholomew and the 500 Hats. Anybody remember that one? He had the hat, take it off, another hat, another hat, another hat. Something about that got me. And then another one that I loved was A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. I would read that book over and over. My mother would buy me very beautiful books and I would love to read them over. It was like um, Arabian Nights and uh, magic carpets and whatever it was, it was beautifully glamorous. So I'm gonna work on this book today with you. I'm gonna talk about this book and how this can be entertaining. Now you read a book the first time to entertain. It's telling a story. When you read a book about three times before you put the book down, next day or next week you read it again because it recalls your memory. You're building memory. You're building in the children's mind the comfort. They're comfortable knowing what's happening. They're so powerless in life. So this opportunity for them 
to see the story and to read it again and predict and say, I've had her already. Wow, does that thrill the life out of them? And you would take the time to look at all of these things and maybe say, um, you might count them or you might, you might say to them, I'm going to put this book down. When we're done, I'm going to leave this book on the ledge next to my chair. If anybody would like to read it, please feel free. And let me tell you, I'm sure you've done this. Kids will go and sit and pretend they're reading to each other, recall the story without, without the words, without having to read the words about these dinosaurs and just go through it. Now, okay, these are reading the story, pointing out the different components of it, uh, and then predicting what's coming next. Is this how you would normally read a story? Yes, Mrs. Castucci, that's how we all read stories. Very good. Uh, so what else could you do with this book that would allow you to extend it some more? You might read the book without any words, and you might, now you might say, on the third time you're reading it, who remembers what's coming next? And you might even give a little flip. Answers are never important. The answer is not important. It's the process. This is a research. This is the beginning of their thesis for their doctorate program. They're gonna need books and computers and materials as resources. This book is a resource. They're learning how to, they're not even reading the words yet. Forget about the words. We're telling the story. We're telling a story and we're going through it, spending a lot of time explaining the details, looking at things, requiring them to use their eyes and focus. Is when a child is sitting on the rug and you're reading the story, he might be busy twirling something else, not paying attention seemingly, but he's listening. But you want full focus if you can get that. Imagination, prediction. What do you think is going to happen? So I was doing this, and then this morning, I came up with a different idea. We have been doing sight words. Now, I thought, I looked it up on the computer, because you can never stop learning. For some reason, I thought sight words were words that you could not sound out. And that might be, have been what it was 100 years ago. But according to what I read, um, online, sight words are commonly used words. That if a child masters those commonly used words, as he or she is reading, he doesn't have to stumble over the word the, over the word of, over the word it, because we're, we're memorizing them. We're memorizing those words. Now, how do we memorize sight words. And when should we memorize sight words? Remember, there's no rule of when this starts and when it ends. Every child comes in with the intelligence, with readiness, but it's all different. I hate when teachers say, oh, how I hate this. He's not ready for my class. He's not ready for my class, which is very, very advanced. No, no, you have to be ready for him. He makes the cutoff date. New Jersey says he's ready for your four-year-old class. New Jersey says he's ready for kindergarten. You better create a climate, a learning environment that meets his entry level and to the best of your ability, move him forward. They're not all going to speak Greek by the time they walk out the door. They may not even have full mastery of every letter and I couldn't care less. If they know three or four letters, they broke the code, they got it. They know A, B, and Z, yippee! The other 23 are coming when they come, but they figured out that an S sounds like s -s 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 snake, and I can recognize the S. Don't ask me about M and N and P, I'm not ready for that. That's all I'm doing for you right now, lady. I'm just gonna do the S. I'll worry, right now I'm busy playing because I've got no toys at home, and all I want is that fire truck, and I want, whatever I want, because I don't have that at home. I've never had those experiences. That I'm at school because I want to touch everything and break it. That's why I'm really here. Am I right? So you're going to lead them on a little bit. I saw somebody do this a long time ago. It was a kindergarten teacher, and she was doing sight words, and she made 
crowns like this. And she made, she used three of the words. I'll just, I think it was kindergarten. I'm going to say, you can, any, now sight words are, I was looking them up. It could be he, love, mom, commonly used word, run, go. Nobody remembers, look, look at Dick and Spot and Jane and Puff. Nobody remembers that. Oh, look, go, Dick, go, run, Spot, run. Oh, Puff, oh, I'm really dating myself. But that's how we learned to read. Five words that we knew, and we put them in a sentence, Dick and Jane. That's how we started recognizing that. So we memorized a little bit. You know, because I didn't finish college in the normal way, I've spent my entire life struggling. I think, I always feel like I missed the opportunity to learn how to perfectly teach reading the correct way. I'm always looking for the holy grail. I'm always trying to figure it out. I gotta go take that course. I gotta figure that out. Oh, is it phonics? Is it sight words? Is it memory? Is it decoding? Is it phonemic awareness? What is it? You know what? It's everything. There's no one way. And no, there's no one way for anybody to learn. You've got to be a master of everything. You've got to break the code for that kid. Kid doesn't know why he's there, but you're there to lead him. So she made sight words. And this is how she used it in kindergarten. She used three children a week. What does this say? It and of and the. Now, for the whole day, three children each wore one of these. Bobby was he. Uh, Sally was it, and Tommy was up. They wore it all day. And you couldn't call them by their names during the day. You had to refer to them, whether it be the cafeteria, the playground, and that's how it was. The next day, three other children, she only worked on three words at a time. It was for the whole week. However, she had it, not too many words, because you, you overwhelm them. This young, I wouldn't even start this to the second half of four-year-old kindergarten. As soon as it's mastered, boom, it goes on the word wall. It's mastered. Hmm. Um, so there are ways to do that. But then today I thought, I'm going to do this with you. This is something I thought and didn't steal. I can't believe it. It's really my own idea. I don't know how it's going to work. Don't try to copyright it because I'm moving forward with it. Okay. Now, boys and girls, we learned this word. Everybody, tell me the word. Let me see your mouth. Say it. He. Oh, yes. I'm going to read this story. I wouldn't do it the first time I read the story. First time I'm reading the story, I'm reading it for content. It's a very interesting story. I would even give them a hint. It's about a dinosaur that has terrible manners. Terrible manners. What does manners mean? Terrible manners. But you're going to see some silly things about the, and the beautiful dinosaurs. So after I... The first time I read it, next time I'm going to read it again with a different focus. Every I'm going to put it on speaker view, or I'm going to sit with my kids. Every time we find the word he, put your thumbs up. Okay, ready? Or put your finger on your nose, or yell it out with me. How does a dinosaur eat all his food? Does he burp? Does he belch or make noises quite rude? How many E's, e's did you say? Do you know that, the, I don't care if they get the concept. Look how you've pulled them into focus. They have pulled into attention. You gotta look like a jerk. You've gotta wear a balloon on your head for a little bit. And then next week, it's not gonna work at all. You go to another part of the room. I just found a gooseneck lamp that somebody threw out when I was going through the garbage, my part-time job, and it was, the base was broken, but it works. A gooseneck lamp, you can take and bend it so that the focus, the spotlight where the lamp would shine, you can put that on a, on a stool, and as you're reading your book, turn all the lights off in the room, and the light shines on this. Another sensory strategy to help them understand. They have no idea that they're even supposed to look at you while you're reading. They're looking at the toys. They're looking at the lunch 
They're looking out the window for their mother. They don't know that the role, they don't know the role of what school is all about. We are really teaching them how to learn. You're teaching them to learn how to learn. It doesn't matter of the concept. It's the strategy of getting them in some manner. It's a hard job. That's why by October, you have no voice. You have laryngitis and you know, you're know dizzy. But this is what you're supposed to do. So let's go to the next story. Oh my gosh. He's very, very, very clumsy. Look what he's doing. You don't eat like that at home, do you? Oh no, no. Let's see if there's any more. H-E-H-E. Does he pick at his cereal? Throw down his cup, hoping to make someone else pick it up? There's one he, right? Ooh, father doesn't look happy. Let me see your face. Make your face like, how would father look if you did that at your house? Show me. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Does he fuss? Does he fidget or squirm in his chair? Oh my God, how would you like to be in a restaurant like that? Thank God we have a pandemic and we don't have to eat with those people or those dinosaurs, right? Huh. All right, you got the idea? Tomorrow. Change. You see he in my head, is that he? No. Oh, what's that word? The. See, there's a lot of words that you can read, children. That's how you're learning how to read. And someday, you're going to read your own book, just like I read to you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we go. Let me see. I haven't done it with that. I'm, I'm learning. I'm discovering this as we're going along. That's my secret in life. I'm never totally prepared <laughs> to the moment of. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm doing a workshop, if I'm out of state, I have done this before. I'll go to like a, a conference and I know all the things I want to say, but I'm never sure exactly how to start. So I always get the newspaper and the headline. Hey, those astronauts just landed on the moon. Ain't that grand that I can start, you know, hook them in, hook them in a little bit with something that's relevant. Always hook the kids in. It's very hard and still wait about five minutes because you can hook me in all you want, but I'm busy looking at something else. I never pay attention to you as a teacher in the beginning. I'm too busy looking out the window, thinking about um, if I'm gonna, what I'm, am I getting those new shoes? When I was a kid, I never paid attention. By the time I paid attention, they're already on chapter three. So a kid like me needs somebody to corral them in. You probably could tell from my body, but once I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, good. Um, so this is what you have to do. You cre create and design your lessons based on the different levels of the children in front of you. Mastery is never your goal. You are not required to have them leaving you speaking. And if the teacher in the next grade has the nerve to say to you or to somebody, what you teach them last year? They don't even know how to write their name. They write it all capitals. Well, you know what? Aren't you lucky that you have a job, Missy? If I had taught them everything, you'd be out on the street. I'm not supposed to teach them everything. I'm teaching them how to learn based on their level of readiness. And they're supposed to fall in love with school. They fall in love with it. If a teacher scares you or intimidates you, I don't know about you, honey, but I, I could I become invisible. I, don't, I can't wait to get the hell out of there as soon as possible without making a mistake. I remember I told you that when I was in the third grade, we would all sit in, in a row. Everything was sitting in a row and you had to read each paragraph. I think we still probably do a lot of that as well. So you, you'd look at the pack, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five kids say, I'm the fifth kid, okay. So I count paragraphs, one, two, three. And all I would do is practice my, my paragraph. I had no idea what the other four were. No idea, because I wasn't listening. I was nervous, right? I was tall, I was always in the back. One, two, three, four, five, I'd get up. You have to stand to read. I'd get up and read. Not only could I not read, I didn't count well. 
I counted the wrong paragraph. So I was either skipping one or repeating what the girl in front of me had done. I was more stressed out by the process. I was always, that's how we, think of all you have to do to be the best teacher on the planet. There's a big secret. You have to never forget what it was like to be a kid. Remember what it was like to have your stomach churn or even to witness, if it wasn't you, the kid next to you getting mistreated or whatever. All you have to do is remember what it felt like and swear that you're never gonna do that. Figure out a way to meet those kids' needs with love and tenderness and you're God's gift, you're God's gift. So let me see if there's any more of those in here. How does a dinosaur eat all his food? Does he burp? Maybe there's no, I didn't, I didn't check to see if there were those. Oh. Does he pick up a cereal, throw down his cup, hoping to make someone else pick it up? Oh no! How does he fuss and fidget or squirm? Well, even if there's no those in there, so what? We're screening it. Now, they're kind of missing the content of the story. So you don't do this the first time. Right now we're exploring the, the words and we're looking at the, the structure of how it was written. We're not almost not even paying attention to the message of it. It's okay, it's okay. You're looking for a specific thing, like looking for a uh, you know, needle in a haystack. Oh, I got, oh, does he flip his spaghetti high into the air? Okay. Now, do you think that that could get your kids to commit and focus and pay attention more carefully? I, I, it's a give it a shot. Give it a shot. Now, you can't be wearing these hats every day all year long, but you can take them out another time. You can do this for shapes and colors. If you are working with twos and threes, you can have people with shapes and colors, like and you can have a red triangle and all the triangle people. Uh, you can have them make a game out of it. There's weight, and nothing like putting a prop on or something like that to um, enhance or add a joyful, playful way into the classroom. Some children won't do it. They're not ready for it. It's intimidating, it's scary. It's okay, it's okay. Ladies, if God wants, you know I want you to come to me because I feed you. Those of you who have come, we love to eat together. I would rather be in the room with you. But right now, if this is what it has to be, I'm yours. I'm delighted. The only thing I ask for you is try some of the things. Sh share the load with me. Share the load. I want to hear. So how am I going to get my ideas if I don't steal from you a little bit and tweak them? Try this in some way or think about how you might want to try it. Give me some, some feedback. Give me some feeling that this is an idea that you can bring to your classroom that'll enhance. And like Ann said, the most important thing, and I hate to make that the priority, you've got to market these things. You've got to take pictures. They've got to see the kids. You've got to explain the theory. And I will give you that. I can write that all out and provide you as to how we lead them into learning, you know? And uh, the beautiful thing, Gloria, is that just like the teachers are learning different ways to to work with their students, we're learning different ways to support the teachers. So even if we're back in school every day the whole year, I mean, this could be going forward a great thing to um, to save people time on the, in the cars and having to leave the school early. So yeah, I'm, as I'm, Ida Linda said, Gloria, you are an inspiration. So oh, thank you. I love you guys. You don't you don't know how you inspire me. I'm a little depressed. I, even I get a, I'm alone. Where's my husband? He's hiding. You know, he passed away that guy, but I, he's with me. He's with me. But I had to wash the screens myself. And this morning I took the garbage out. I wasn't in the contract when we got married. That was his job. I, you know, these are the crazy things I think of, but I know Angelo's with me and I have you people and uh, it gives me a blessing. God is with me all the time. Uh, I don't know how, how I got to be so lucky to work with you ladies and to learn from you, but um, amen. You know, that's amen. my prayer. That's our prayer. Amen. Thank you for one another. Love you. Okay. Take See care, you everybody. Have Take a care. good week. Bye-bye. Take care.